Hey, what's happening, all you pirates out there? I'm Deuce Diz Din, and I'm finally back to One Piece chapter reviews. Mostly because, is as of this chapter, there are ten chapters until chapter 1000. Chapter 1000 of One Piece. Now, I've been keeping up with this series ever since. It premiered on four kids, and I have loved this series ever since. I have done my best to keep up with this series ever since. And I've just been enjoying it so much. Like, Wano has been a magnificent arc. And it's hard to believe that it's gone on for so long and just managed to maintain its quality for so long. Because Dressrosa kind of ran long in the tooth, Totland kind of ran long in the tooth, and by the time the arcs were over, you were kind of done with it. But with this story, especially with the past few chapters where all the Straw Hats finally came together, finally ready to take on the combined forces of Orochi, Big Mom, and Kaido. I say that, but uh, some of the forces are kind of scattered for the most part. You know, Big Mom pirates keep falling down that waterfall. Uh... The uh, forces of Orochi have kind of been coerced into working for Kaido, and Kaido's men are basically all sloshed, so it, it's a very tenuous experience. And I feel like, if not for that, the allied forces of the Minx, the Pirates, the Samurai, they would have no chance in any of this. Had the forces of the Yonko and... Orochi come together properly, they would have decimated them. But because of the nature of that alliance, our alliance is going well in spades. But let's get into the chapter proper as we begin. Chapter 990, titled Army of One. It's <laughs> freaking like a uh, military recruitment. You can become an army of one. But we continue on with Gang Beige's cover story, Oh My Family, Volume 34. Hang on tight. Mama told us our father is a clingy man who never gives up no matter how many times he's kicked. So we see that Chiffon and Lola finally believe that Pound is in fact their father. Because he doesn't know how to take a goddamn hint <laughs> it runs in that side of the family apparently but hell that goes for big mom too woman don't know how to take a damn hint but i'm surprised that this cover story has gone on for as long as it has like oh my god not oh my family oh my god this is long i have no idea when it's going to end because it could go anywhere like it's just basically them the family coming together i guess it's just like the collection of gang Beige's family and them all coming together and being a proper family that seems to be the direction this is going so uh, until the whole family is united sans big mom because of reasons if this cover story will end so we're getting there we're getting there as soon as they fully accept pound we'll be good but you know we continue on in omnigashima as we see that um sasaki has been freed from the sacred tree that he was tied up to by kyoshiro and he was only freed because of big mom's attack now it managed to just cut through all of the all the way outside freeing him and he comments on the fact that yeah jesus that is uh that is kind of scary. <laughs> and you know, Sasaki continues to just drink his life away. But he comments about the fact that Kyoshiro is one of the vassals of Odin. 
He don't care too much about that, but he's a, still a little miffed that someone he continue, can, considered a friend betrayed him. But that kind of takes a back seat once he notices all the commotion going on on the Skull Dome of Onikashima, where we see that Kaido is staring down the samurai. The samurai are staring down Kaido. All the while, the forces of Jack, the Beast Pirates, and one of the numbers are just doing battle with all of the, um, the, uh, the, the, blah, 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 the forces of both Nekamumushi and Inuarashi, the Minx, and they are just, they're really decimating Kaido's forces for the most part, because the power of both Sulong and their enhanced Electro, they're, they're doing phenomenal, they are putting up a great fight, and you see Jack in his mammoth form, now, this isn't his most powerful form, of course, but he's still fairly powerful in his mammoth form. And you see all these swords just sticking out of him, he's bloody, he's bruised, and he is decimating the mink forces. Like, he alone is probably the, doing the most against the mink forces. And as this goes on, we see Kinemon actually kind of getting ready to take on Jack, because he's just like, okay, maybe I need to step in. However, he's stopped by Nekamumushi and Inarashi as they transform into their Sulong form, and they are all too ready to take on Jack because of what he did to Zo. You know, he is, they are all too ready to take him down. So we might just get to see Jack in his hybrid form in the next few chapters. I can't wait. Although I am sad that we didn't get to fully see Nekamamushi and Inorashi's Su Long forms. Like, come on, man. Give it to me. Just give it to me. We then go inside to the performance stage inside the dome where King meets up with Queen and you know Queen is just like mm, those are all of the prisoners back at the Udon camp that's not good and King kind of berates Queen like I'm not saying this is all your fault but this is all your fault and Queen's just like mm, yeah I've, I've been mulling it over and uh you know, one or two people escaping is one thing, but what the shit, Baba Nuki? What did you do? Why did you lie to me? Like, he, he's really trying to piece together what happened back at Udon. Meanwhile, King contacts the Toby Ropo. But before X Drake picks up, we see that he is with. Basil Hawkins and X Drake, well, DS Drake, but I just, X Drake to me. I call it Hunter X Hunter, not Hunter Cross Hunter. Uh, but X Drake is talking to Basil Hawkins about, hey, if you were thinking about turning, turning Coton, this is the time to do it. With all this chaos, mischief, all this going on, you know, you, you didn't choose to chime with Kaido. You were kind of coerced into it. So if you want to bounce, now's the time. And Hawkins is just paying Drake no mind. But he does say there is 1%. And he specifies to Drake that 1% is the chances of a certain man surviving until tomorrow. Which begs the question, who is he talking about? Drake? Kaido? Luffy? It wouldn't be the first time that Hawkins has uh, mulled over the chances of Luffy surviving. So... You know, it really does make you wonder, whose fortune is he testing? And this also drives into the fact that a lot of people believe that Haw once Hawkins gets a uh, feeling for how Luffy continually beats unsurmountable odds, that he will join with Luffy in taking down Kaido and Big Mom and all that. So, we'll just have to wait and see on that one, but... He ignores Drake's call to revolt, and Drake eventually answers the call from King. King and the rest of the Tobiropo 
received the call that the situation has changed. There are over 5,000 intruders, and this is a major disaster. It's a major shit show. Never before in the history of Onigashima has something like this happened, and yet we can't have this. The forces of the Straw Hats and the Samurai and the Minx and blah 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 are all going to try to get up to Kaido. We cannot allow that. You guys need to stop them. Stop whoever, whatever, do whatever you can to stop them. We get this cute little moment between um, uh, um, page one and ulti, you know, the little kids of the Toby Robo, basically. Uh, it's just, it's, it's a nice aside. Honestly, I'm wondering what pirate crew they come from because they're the two youngest of the Toby Ropo as well so it just really makes me wonder it's just like what is their deal what is their backstory because more than uh, the likes of who's who Sasaki or Black Maria it's just like what's their backstory where do they come from but the whole situation of overthrowing one of the uh, you know one of the calamities has basically been called off for the most part and he's just like best of luck go get him who's who then meets up with drake and asks him to come along on a mission to kill to go to queen you know, to take out the person that Who's Who wanted to take down. And while Drake at first seems disinterested, Hawkins has this very contemplative look on his face. Meanwhile, on the performance floor, the numbers, well, the remaining numbers, are running rampant. As the... As all around them, you see the Yakuza taking down the um, Beast Pirates, while the Obi Oniwabanshu step in to kind of take them on, along with the Mima uh, Warigumi. Just all these words I have to say. And, you know, as this is going on, um, we see um, Fukurokuju. Uh, kind of walking off to do something as the leader of the Mimawari Gumi notices this and kind of questions what Fukurokuju might be up to. Because, you know, like, why is Fukurokuju just kind of walking off in this situation? It does raise a lot of questions. Um, Hoti, that's his name. Hoti knows just that Fukurokuju is just walking off in the middle of all of this. Um, at the same time, the samurai try to take on one of the numbers, but it's pretty obvious they are ineffective. And they're trying to do this in order to allow the Straw Hats to just move on and get to Kaido to take him down. But they're about to get crushed by one of the numbers. And before this can happen, in comes Zoro, you know, slicing off one of the numbers' clubs. And as it goes spiraling into the crowd, Jinbei catches it and pushes it to the side so they really are just showing off and showing up and Luffy comments on the fact that these numbers are like the size of oars they're very much like oars but the difference in between then and now is that now the straw hats are way more powerful as we saw during the events of Sabodi, and then when they return to Sabodi, where the pacifistas were like really strong, and only for them to come back two years later and just decimate the pacifistas immediately. And Luffy turns into gear four in order to take down the numbers as another of the numbers joins the one he was about to strike at. Meanwhile, we see that Drake has been just molly whopped by the combined efforts of who's who and queen while hawkins just kind of stands off to the side so we come to find out that the person that queen has been after in the toby ropo and the person that who's who has been after this entire time you know because they've been playing the pronoun game throughout all of this they have been 
very, very coy about who exactly they've been after. They keep implying that who's who has been after Queen and vice versa, but they never directly said that. And especially in the Viz translation, they always kind of play coy on who who they're actually talking about. But we see that they were actually going after X Drake because of the fact that Who's Who knows that he helped, that Drake helped Law escape. And it's kind of weird because Hawkins, you know, makes it sound like he kind of ratted Drake out, but at the same time, he doesn't directly say say anything, despite the fact that, it, of course it was Drake, you know, you were right there as well, so, something about Hawkins' involvement in all this seems very suspect, but, you know, Queen is ready to take down X Drake, you know, who's who is just like your embarrassment that you even were in the Toby Ropo, they're just like, who are you a part of, is it just you, is it a group, who exactly are you? But x being a trained member of S.W.O.R.D., you know, this double, triple agent, is basically like, yeah, I ain't talking. So Queen's just like, oh, okay, I'll just torture it out of you. How about that, motherfucker? And immediately x just, she sets something off, because the whole room that they're in explodes. Um... Who's who comes running out? It's just like Drake has escaped. He's an enemy. Get after him. So Drake is making his way. He's transformed into his hybrid form. He's doing his best to get out of there. He comes lunging down to the performance floor where one of the numbers is and he does his special attack X Caliber. He takes out one of the numbers just as Luffy is taking out one of the numbers in his gear forth king with his king. Kong gun, and it's just like they both managed to take out one of the numbers with the quickness, and Drake thinks back to something that Kobe had told him, and I was like, oh, Kobe, I love you, baby, my sweet little baby boy, Kobe, and Kobe's just like, dude, trust me, Luffy is amazing, when in doubt, if there's no hope left, it's always going to be betting on Luffy. And so everybody's just like, man, that's that's Drake from the Toby Ropa. Why'd he attack one of the numbers? And Drake is just like, Straw Hat Luffy. For reasons I can't explain right now, I'm on my own. And I would like you to let me fight by your side. And Luffy's just like, Nani? <laughs> like, Nani? Like, what? Like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> so, just a very interesting moment. I'm really wondering if Luffy will actually believe him, because, you know, he said he can sense intentions. You know, he sensed it with Yama Yamato, so it's just like he should technically sense this from Drake as well. And just be like, you know, not to mention the fact that who's who and Queen are going to be coming after his ass. So that they're going to see him fighting against the Beast Pirates and be like, okay, more the merrier. You know, get in on this action, Drake. Get on my boat, Drake. So, you know, it's good to see that slowly but surely the supernovas are like allying themselves with the straw hats one by one so i'm very curious to see if maybe apu will come around if hawkins will come around because that just seems to be the thing you know luffy you know starts off as an enemy of each of the uh supernovas but slowly ends up becoming an ally of them through various different means for one reason or the other so i'm very interested to see how this alliance with this army of one is going to go down but i'm very fascinated to see where we go from here on out i really want to see that showdown between nekamamushi and ino arashi i can't wait to see you know what sasaki actually ends up doing like you know is he gonna actually go after um denjiro and what of king 
and Queen and who's who, you know, are they going to join in on the fight? Because it's just going to kind of become like an NL's lobby where, you know, the all the straw hats would be trying to climb up in order to get to Robin or find the keys to free Robin. Is that, that the situation that's going on here? And who was Hawkins' prediction for? Who has a 1% chance of, you know, of surviving? You know, Hawkins said at one point that Luffy's chances never quite reach zero. It's always at least 1%. I, I remember this. But I really am wondering what's going to happen next in the next chapter of Wano Kuni. But tell me your thoughts and theories in the comment section below and your feeling on this chapter. Do you have any speculation as to what might be happening next time? And until then, I hope you'll continue to join me as the countdown to 1000 continues. I'm Dudes Diz Then, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye! <laughs>